Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at the difference between Pep Guardiola and Eric Ten Hag's tactics. Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash that like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. So what is Pep Guardiola known for? Renowned for a 4-3-3, Guardiola popularised tiki-taka, a style of football that aims for total domination of possession. A cornerstone of his philosophy is fuego de possession, or positional play. The aim is to use the initial structure and the positioning of players combined with off-the-ball movement to create advantages and superiorities. For example, Guardiola's team will build down one flank to draw the opposition over, leaving the other side underloaded often leaving a dynamic winger in a 1v1 situation or qualitative overload. They'll then look to switch the ball quickly to that side to allow the winger more space to beat his man and create chances. In terms of chance creation, a classic pep move is to get the ball wide then attack the byline, often finding an underlapping run with a central player followed by a low cross or cutback. Guardiola is also well known for creating a highly organised attacking structure. Last season mostly saw City attack in a 3-2-5, but we've seen different systems for Guardiola for different situations. Regardless, there's always constants. Wingers adopt extremely wide and high positions to stretch the opposition horizontally with their positioning to create gaps, as well as vertically with their speed and movement in behind. Central midfielders are often highly creative and offensive and support the front three in most attacks, whilst their fullbacks take up inverted positions, moving centrally to overload the midfield and provide a solid presence to allow the midfielders to take up higher positions. Inverted fullbacks can also protect against the negative transitions through counter-pressing, which leads us on to another key principle of Guardiola, intense but intelligent pressing. When City lose the ball, they deploy an aggressive counter-press for around five seconds. If they can't regain the ball in that time, they'll retreat into a restrictive 4-4-2 that looks to block forward passing lanes, forcing the opposition to try and play a risky pass forward or go long. So, how does Eric Ten Hag tactics compare? Guardiola is arguably the most influential coach in the modern era, and Ten Hag coached the Bayern second team, whilst Pep coached the senior side, so there's a big overlap between the pair. Notably, last season, Ten Hag's Ajax and Pep's Man City shared a lot of similarities. Both would set up in a variant of a 4-3-3, featuring two attacking midfielders, anchored by one defensive midfielder. They'd also use a 3-2-5 attacking structure, with inverted wingers holding the width, midfielders in the attack, attacking unit and inverted fullbacks taking up central positions. In fact, both of the front five and base five were made up of the same starting positions, with the forwards usually consisting of two wingers, two attacking midfielders and a striker. Ajax and Manchester City would both look to dominate possession and they'd be both successful at this. Across Europe's top seven leagues, City and Ajax were the only two teams that averaged more than 65% possession. Both teams will play out from the back, relying on a sweeper keeper to become an 11th outfielder and use positional play to create chances as well as from underlaps and low crosses. They'd also both adopt an aggressive counter press and then they drop into a defensive 4-4-2 block. Whilst all of these are fairly common across modern possession-based sides, the fluidity and amount of positional flexibility shown in attack by Ajax and City last season were quite unique and best highlighted the similarities between the manager's style. So Ten Hag is cut from a very similar cloth to Pep, but what about their Manchester clubs this season? It's still very early on in the Ten Hag reign, and whilst we've seen some flashes of what could come in the future, United are not the finished article yet. Manchester City, meanwhile, are a little bit of a transition themselves, thanks to the arrival of Erling Haaland. The goal-scoring robot has hit the ground running, and his style of play as a last-line poacher couldn't be further from the roaming false nine that Guardiola deployed last season. Julian Alvarez is definitely more of a Guardiola striker, but understandably, Haaland's goals will make him first choice. Haaland's goal scoring also brings number nines as a whole back into the spotlight. Recently, strikers have seen a resurgence across Europe as their team's main goal threat. In fact, the top six goal scorers across Europe's top five leagues last season were all strikers. Unlike the wide forwards we've come to expect from the 2010s, there does seem to be an increasing number of quality strikers returning to the top level, with Mbappe, Lewandowski, Benzema, Kane, Vlahovic, Immobile, Mitchell and Arlen to name a few. If you're interested in us doing a little video on the return of the number nine, let me know in the comments below. Interestingly, this brings City closer to United, who have been forced to play with Cristiano Ronaldo or Marcus Rashford as a centre forward, both who are very much last line strikers.
strikers like Haaland. When Anthony Martial is fully fit, this could become a major difference, given his performances as a false nine in pre-season. But for now, classic number nines lead the lines in Manchester. There are still a lot of big similarities between the tactics with high and wide inverted wingers, midfielders supporting the front three, inverted fullbacks moving centrally and using positional play, but that's where the similarities kind of end. United do defend in a 4-4-2 and look to block central passing lanes like City, but the pressing isn't there at United. Only Newcastle have forced more high turnovers in the Premier League this season than Pep City, whilst Ten Hag's United rank 17th for high turnovers. Chance creation is also quite different. Ten Hag is working towards his Ajax chance creation using underlaps and low crosses or cutbacks. While City still look for this, we're seeing a lot more crosses from deep and overlaps followed by early deliveries to exploit Erling Haaland's size and movement. However, there's a big difference in the inverted fullbacks. Man City's fullbacks, Cancelo and Walker, are playing support roles this season, and Cancelo only ever joins attacks, never both. Manchester United's fullbacks, on the other hand, Delo and Malassia, have a lot more attacking freedom. It does depend on positioning of the other players, notably Bruno Fernandes and Christian Eriksen, but we've seen both fullbacks holding the attacking width for United in the same move. And this change in roles is backed by the stats. Delo and Cancelo are the two more attacking fullbacks in the side. Despite Cancelo being one of the best attackers last season, Delo comes out on top this season for a number of key metrics, but notably accurate crosses, shot creating actions, chances created, and expected assists. Eric Ten Hag and Pep Guardiola are two of the tactically closest managers in the Premier League. And whilst Ten Hag is making progress at Old Trafford, Manchester United are far from his finished Ajax team. In fact, in the Premier League this season, United are averaging less than 50% possession, while City are seeing more than 70% of the ball. Despite that, there are still some big similarities between the tactical approach of the teams. And as Ten Hag builds his United squad, expect to see more similarities to Pep Guardiola. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Will Eric Ten Hag build his Manchester United into a Pep Guardiola team, or will he go in another direction? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new. I've been Statman Dave, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?